Hello everybody, welcome to But Lazier, where we sacrifice quality for convenience. For our first episode, we're gonna make birria tacos with the oxtail from the deep end of my freezer. As I'm checking the expiration date, I realize supposedly it has gone bad two months ago. But just like the obvious red flags of an attractive person, I choose to ignore all expiration dates. My iron stomach is ready to take on this new challenge. Let's get started. Since the oxtails have been vacuum sealed in their own juices for a long time, the surface area is really wet right now. So to get a better color when we sear it later, I'm gonna dry brine it. Basically the process of salting it all over and air drying in the fridge for an extended amount of time. Could someone please explain in the comments why is my meat turning blue? After salting on all sides on a wired rack, we'll rearrange it into a complete tail. This is when I realized these pieces are not from the same cow. The first four pieces are way too big and all of a sudden, this one becomes a normal size. Even though it's called an oxtail, this cut of meat doesn't necessarily have to come from an ox, could also come from a cow. I'm starting to get a little confused over the terminologies to describe this animal, so I did a little research and this is what I found. of humans. But anyways, we'll put them in the fridge and dry brine it for about an hour or so. So something came up, I left it in the fridge overnight, it is the next day now. The good thing is that the surface is nice and dry, it's gonna give us a much better browning. While the pan is heating up, we'll cut an onion, and this is gonna be a really intricate cut, it's quite difficult for normal people. But don't worry, I'll teach you, watch closely. Like that, alright? It was too fast, so I'll show you again. Like that. Get it? Now let's move on to searing these pieces. Try to avoid crowding the pan so the meat doesn't start steaming each other. That way it will never get to browning. We'll flip him in about 2 minutes. Don't worry if the surface is not browned evenly because oxtails don't have smooth sides anyways. While it's searing, it's time to prepare our chiles. I'm using 3 types of chiles today. What I got here are 3 anchos. It's sweet and is fruity, has a lot of raisin flavor. It's gonna help us build a dark, rich foundation for the stew. And our second type of chile is guajillo. This is the smokiest, most earthy, and also the hottest chile out of the three. It's gonna help us achieve a brick red color and also give a kick to the dish. Last but not least, we have pasilla. This is kind of like an in-between of the previous two. And to deceit a long pepper like this, you just kind of have to stroke on it and all the seeds will come shooting out. Here are all the deceited chiles we're gonna use later. We'll quickly finish searing the smaller pieces while finishing our sachet on the side. We'll first take a tea bag and put in three bay leaves, or in this case, all of my bay leaves. In goes about a tablespoon of fennel seeds, two tablespoons of black peppercorns. This is probably the most important ingredient. And finally, a cinnamon stick. Don't try to smoke it like a cigarette, you're gonna end up coughing for like 20 minutes. Don't ask me how I found out. Once they're all decently colored, we'll take them out and in goes the onion. The moisture from the onion is going to help us release the fawn that's been forming on the bottom. After the onions get some color, we'll put in a whole can of tomatoes. You can use whatever base you'd like, chicken stock, beef stock. I'm using tomatoes here to keep up with my brand. And just as you expected, I'm going to crush up all the tomatoes with my ligma fork. Tomatoes have a lot of natural MSG in it, but that's not enough for me, so I'm going to add some better than bouillon. After mixing it all in, we'll fill it up with water. So over here in the pot, we have some caramelization from the onion. We have the fond from the oxtail, natural MSG from tomatoes, and even better, lab MSG from better than bouillon. We'll place all the oxtails back into the pot. If you don't have enough liquid, just pour some more water in there, as well as the dried chiles and the sachet. We're gonna take 30 minutes to rehydrate everything, and then we'll take it out and blend them up. You don't have to wait for the liquid to come to a simmer. As long as it's hot, it's gonna rehydrate just fine. Put on the lid and set a 30 minute timer. 30 minutes has passed, and I'll offer you a free facial. And start blending them. Oh. 
that better. I usually just take out all the pieces of meat first so that it's easier to strain out all the chiles and the onions. Put as much blendable substance into the food processor as you can. We're trying to make sure our consomme is nice and smooth. Once all the vegetables are blended into a paste, we'll pour it back into the liquid to give it flavor and thickness. Stir them around to evenly distribute and then put all the pieces back in. Oh, I forgot to mention, don't blend the sachet. Hope you knew that. Now we'll cover it again and wait for two and a half hours. So something came up, I accidentally left it in there for four hours, and this is what it looks like. Look how jiggly the meat got, it's literally about to fall off the bones. But just when I'm about to be proud of myself for cooking this flawlessly. Oh my god. It's stuck. Oh no, can't believe it. We'll deal with it later. All the pieces are taken out, we'll put them aside while we remove the broth from the pot. I just realized I'm capable of burning things inside of a pot full of liquid. We'll put it aside for now, the cleanup is about to be real fun. Since we cooked them for 4 hours, shredding them should be really easy. Just lightly poking it will make it fall off the bone. I want to start cooking these tacos today, but I keep my corn tortillas in the freezer and I forgot to thaw them. Still frozen like that. And it's already 11 p.m. I'm kind of tired. So I'm going to shred all this meat and store the consomme and we'll cook it tomorrow. Some of these bones are a little bit strangely shaped. We'll just use a ligma fork to pull it out. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know how much I love this fork. But unfortunately, it's starting to get loose. I'm afraid that if I keep using it, it's eventually going to be broken. I thought about framing it and never using it again. But maybe the ligma fork wants to embrace death in the middle of a cooking process. So it's a much more honorable way to go. Let me know in the comments what should I do. Anyways, now we have a bowl of shredded meat and what seems to be a bowl of fat. We'll store them and go to sleep for now. Alright, now is the third day of cooking this dish and it's just assembly. It's pretty simple. I got the consomme heating over here and I just microwave the meat and I'm gonna start heating the pan on medium low while I'm gonna chop some onions. I was gonna get Oaxaca, then I remember I still have a half a wheel of raclette. And it's been sitting in my fridge and it smells so bad, I wanna use it as soon as possible. We'll quickly slice off a piece and that's all the preparation we need. We got cheese, meat, consomme, and the onions here. To start the assembling process, we'll take a piece of corn tortilla and dunk it into the consomme. Once it's all covered up with oil, we'll throw it into the pan. Lay in some of the raclette slices to start melting it. Honestly, you can use any type of cheese you like. Mozzarella, Monster, Monterey Jack. Those cheeses are really good at pulling. Unlike me, I guess. When the cheese starts to get bubbly, we'll lay in the beef. You can put as much or as little as you want. As long as you stuff your taco using meat with tenderness, it's gonna lead to pleasurable results despite its portion size. After a quick sprinkle of chopped up raw onion, it's time to fold. You probably don't want to use tongs for this one because you want to be extra careful. Maybe a rubber spatula or something. I'm using it because I'm a professional. As you all know, I know how to handle my tacos gently. Huh? No. We'll just quickly patch it up. Hopefully the cheese will melt and glue it all together. I learned my lesson, so I'm gonna use a rubber spatula to get it out. Nice job, team. So here we have it. Birria tacos with consomme. Little squeeze of lime in both. I forgot to get it, but usually you want some chopped up cilantro as well. But as always, true validation always come from Instagram. After three days, it's time to give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. This is one of the messiest things to eat ever. You'll see what I mean in a sec.
Wujud The meat is savory and juicy and the raclette cheese adds a lot of richness and some fruity notes. All that enclosed by the crunchy corn tortilla. And dipping into that consomme not only adds that additional spicy kick, but also the lime juice and the onion refresh your palate with each bite. I feel like I shouldn't rate my own cooking out of 10 since I'm gonna be extremely biased. So give me a rating in the comment section. What do you guys think of our first episode of Butt Lazier? Let me know if this is lazy enough. Alright, thank you.